This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. I still believe that God will sit down upon your praise. And, and, and when he sits on you, he, he, he smears his presence on your life. He's there. His anointing is there. Burdens are removed. Yokes are destroyed when you're praising God. I, you have to believe that. And, and I've got to, I'm getting kind of excited right now that when God sits down and, and his presence is invited where you are, that supernatural things begin to happen. Praise uh, as a weapon. Let's look at that. Praise as a weapon against the devil. Praise as a weapon against the devil. I, I want to look at two scriptures and combine these scriptures together. Matthew 21 and 16 and then Psalms 8 and 2. It talks about praise coming out of the mouth of, of babes. And, and then Psalm tells us what, what's the significance and the power of of praise coming out of the mouth of bays. Matthew 21, 16, and uh, here's what he says. Matthew 21, 16, he says, and he said unto him, hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, yea, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? Okay, when I first read that, I'm like, cool. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, they have per perfected praise, all right? So what's the benefit of it coming out of their mouth? And what's the benefit of perfected praise coming out of their mouth? Well, look at Psalms 8 and 2. I got really excited about this. Psalms 8 and 2 in the King James. And he says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. He says that thou mightest still or quiet the enemy and the avenger. He says that now praise, first of all, he says it's strength, praise God. And then as far as the enemy is concerned, he will still the enemy. He will quiet the enemy. He will paralyze the enemy in a sense. You know, one of the things the enemy does is he likes to say things and puts thoughts in your mind, and he says that praise will quiet him. You know, Satan gets very upset when he sees God, sees us giving God the praise because that's what he wants. And what we've got to understand is that, you know, God has allowed out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, he's ordained strength because, why? Because of the enemy. Because of the enemy. I have something because of the enemy, or I got some for him. You understand what I'm saying? And I have something that will quiet him, that will steal him. I have something that will paralyze him. And what is that? That's praise. That's praise. That, see, you've got to ask yourself, in the middle of being confronted with all of the issues of life, what's your first response? Uh, you, you begin to renew your mind and the spirit of your mind to produce what's that first response? You know, there's some things that, that we train in as Christian people. Some people think, well, you're under grace. You don't need to, you don't need to do any of this. Well, I, I mean, I want to have a relationship with God. I want to have a better relationship with God. And, and I want to discover some of the things that I can do 
to have a better relationship with God because I, I want him, not because of anything else except I want him. And I want to know that God has given me and equipped me with, with this wonderful praise that if I will praise him out of that relationship and out of that love, that anything that's coming against me is going to have to submit to what came out of my mouth. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I praise God for what he's doing. I praise God for provision. I praise God for people being healed. Uh, and, and even if people, if, even if people died of COVID-19, I praise God that they got born again, that they're in heaven, that they're not lost. There's things we can praise God for. And I'm telling you, you can praise God that you'll not be in insufficiency. You can praise God that you're not going to get sick. You can praise God that your relationships are going to be restored. You can praise God for, I, I, listen, you can, I, I spent an hour just praising God. Didn't, didn't have to repeat myself. There was so much that I could praise him for. And praise God while you're at home or whatever device you're looking at right now, man, praise God. Praise God that you can, you can still be taught the Word of God. Praise God that we're even inviting more people to be a part of our Wednesday night crew. Praise God for revelation that's coming to you, things that you're hearing by the Holy Ghost right now. He's worthy. He's worthy, worthy to be praised. You know, the two scriptures together show us that praise is strength to quiet the enemy and the avenger. You know, pride made Satan want to be like God. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Once again, he wants praise. The spirit of mammon wants what God gets from you. The spirit of mammon wants worshipers. The spirit of mammon wants a church, if you can get it, he wants your trust. He wants you to need him. And that's why the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is to trust money more than you trust God. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, Satan can't stand to hear God praised. It makes him, make, makes him mad and it makes him flee. It makes him mad and it makes him flee. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You know, as a kid growing up, I used to always pick at my sisters. I knew exactly what their buttons were, you know, just, just always picking at them, you know. Well, I'm telling you, you, you here's a big old button, you know, uh, that'll just get on the devil's nerve. I mean, he's doing some things, and, and, and you don't sit there and tolerate it. Hit that button of praise and, and, and send him on out. He can't stand it when you praise God. But I love it. Amen? Praise God. Praising God puts to flight all of the hurts. It puts to flight all of the pains and the demonic oppression with which Satan has tried to bind you. It opens up your heart and prepares you to receive from God. I believe that. I believe that praise prepares you to receive from God. I believe that, that even just by teaching on this tonight and then by you begin to operate in it, you're going to receive some things from the Lord. Um, let's look at something in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, and I'm going to read there for a moment. This is a story about Paul and Silas. One of the things I had to realize is that Paul and Silas, they didn't praise God because they thought, aha, here's a great principle. Let's do this and we'll get out of jail. They're in love with him, man. They're in love with him. They're not, they're not doing this so God can give them a, a pat on the back. They're in love with him. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't even know if they understood that this would happen. Look at what he says in verse 25. They're in jail. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. I, I, listen, I, I want you to put yourself in that situation. They're not, they're not doing this because they say, hey, we're going to get out of jail and we're going to pray and praise the Lord and bam, we're going to... I don't, I, don't, I don't think that was the case. I think when you have a relationship with God and when you, when, you, when you love Him and you know God loves you, you know, we talked about... Uh, uh, I was talking to some folks about... They asked me the question, what does it mean to return to your first love? It means to remind yourself about how much God loves you. It, it means reminding yourself of the love that He has for you first. 
And <laughs> praise God. And, and that's what I believe we, we have here with, with Paul and Silas is, you know, I know God loves me. I love him and I'm going to talk to him and I'm going to sing praises to him. And the, prison, the prisoners heard them. So this came and was born out of a relationship with God. And now it translates it down to where we are today. And now we're working the mechanics of it. Man, we got to get away from that. We're working the mechanics of it without the relationship of it. So look what happens when praise comes from a heart that loves God and knows God loves, that God loves you. He says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. So they're, they're praising God and suddenly there's a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. That's pretty cool. And, and the keeper of the prison, awakening, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled because he knows I might as well kill myself. I don't know how this happened. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I'm dreaming. I don't know if I'm drunk. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm. Don't kill yourself for we are all here. Wow. Look at this. Then he called for a light and he sprang in and he came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. So obviously he couldn't see them. That's why he called for a light. Then he saw everybody still in there. You know what? That just, that, that got me. The doors are open, the bands are loose, and they're still in there praising God. I mean, if, if the presence of God in there, where are we going? <laughs> if the presence of God in there, where are we going? Praise the Lord. And he put the light on them, and he saw everybody that was still there praising God, and he brought them out, and he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? See, when people see the authenticity of your relationship with God and they see that your love for him and his love for you, and that's what they saw. They saw God's love for them. The doors opened, the, the chains fell off their wrists. And when they see that, people are going to want what you have. And you're praising God. And maybe, see, see he was asleep in the middle of that, but when all that stuff happened, oh my goodness. And so he says, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? All of that, and you know the rest of the story, all of that as a result of two people saying, let's go ahead and praise God. They praised God because they were in love with him. And their love for God drove them to praise him. I mean, that's what it is. When you love God, man, you're going to praise him. Praise is powerful, and it releases, I believe, the anointing of God. I, I believe supernatural things are released when we practice this praise. Look at Psalms 22 and 3 while I'm thinking about that. Psalms 22 and 3, you know, praising God and releasing supernatural things that are happening. I think that's what we need to start doing right now. I think we need to start doing that. He says, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. They did to Israel in those days. I still believe that God will sit down upon your praise. And, and, and when he sits on you, he, he, he smears his presence on your life. He's there. His anointing is there. Burdens are removed. Yokes are destroyed when you're praising God. I, you have to believe that. And, and I've gotta, I'm getting kind of excited right now that when God sits down and, and his presence is invited where you are, that supernatural things begin to happen. You've got to understand right now I'm teaching in, in, in front of, you know, 8,500 empty seats right now. But I know you're on the other side, and I sense the presence of the Lord. I sense his presence right now, you know, sitting down on me right now. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise God. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, I believe that you're sensing his presence right now wherever you are, that you're sensing the presence of the Lord, and whether you're watching whatever device you're watching, whether you're in the living room, the bedroom, the car, the garage, the presence of the Lord is, is sitting down upon you right now. And I believe that that same presence that you're sensing and experiencing right now, that same presence can, 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 can sit down uh, uh, upon all of those who are demonstrating for justice and, and all of those who are 
who are hurting from COVID-19 and, and all of those who have, have lost a loved one and their hearts broken, I just pray the presence of God would just sit down on you right now. If you'll just praise him right now where you are, praise him for his goodness, praise him for his mercy, praise God, praise God, praise the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And he sits down upon you. Burdens are removed. Yokes are destroyed because of God's presence and God's anointing in your life. Praise will break your chains. Praise will break your chains, those chains that are, are held you back, that bondage that's in your life, that thing that you're trying to, you've been trying to figure out how to get free from. I just, in the name of Jesus, I declare that those chains be broken right now in the name of Jesus and that you walk away from that bondage in the name of Jesus. Supernaturally, praise God. Not because you came to a church building, because you're yielding to the presence of the Holy Spirit. You're trying to figure out, some of you, how in the world did I get Get, get online and listen to this guy. I don't even know how I got there, but then you just, you just kind of, God froze you right there, and that's the presence of God you're feeling right now. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit you're feeling right now. It's coming through technology right now, and it's causing your chains to fall off, and you'll walk free of it, praise God. It's driving the devil off, and it gets you out of that bad situation. Some of you are coming out of that bad situation right now. I don't know what that situation is, but you're coming out of that bad situation right now. Somebody says, why? We're praising the Lord. I, I, okay, okay, I know. Wednesday night crew, all right, we, we're going to teach, 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 but I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel the anointing of God in this place, and I know you do too. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's look at the final uh, motivation behind this praise and this is a big one for me. It's because it ministers to God. It blesses God. Praise blesses God. It ministers to him. You know, 1 John 4, 8, 1 John 4, 8, it ministers to him. Glory, 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 glory. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, God is love. Watch this, and he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. All right, so God is love, and love likes to be reciprocated. John 3, 16. Um, and, you know, when you begin to look at what God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but they shall have what everlasting life. Our praise is a thanksgiving that lets, God, that, let, that lets God know how much we appreciate what he has done for us. It's a thanksgiving. Thank you, God. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for how you've ministered to me. It reciprocates the love that he first loved us with, and it ministers to him. God loved me first, equipped me with supernatural love so I can now love myself, I can love others. <laughs> and, and we reciprocate that love that he first loved us with as we praise him and as we thank him, we minister to him. The Old Testament exhorts Israel and it says to bless the Lord but this has become a religious cliche today. Bless the Lord. We don't really understand that, what that means. He, uh, thanking God is what blesses him. Being grateful to God is what blesses him. Ministering to him through the gift giving is what blesses him. You know, you, do you know God has emotions? I don't think a lot of people realize that God has emotions. And th that's why I tell people, you know, don't yield to bad emotions. Believe God for godly emotions. Bad emotions, man. You get those bad emotions, they lead you to a bad place. And the weakest man on the planet is a man that cannot control his emotions, won't receive that gift of self-control. Thanking God is what blesses him. 
He isn't bound by his emotions. God isn't. He has emotions, but he's not bound by his emotions the way that people are. But he has them. And it'd be cool to know that my praise and worship and my gratitude moves him emotionally. It ministers to God when you give him praise. Wow. You know, God gave everything to us. The least we can do is be thankful. The least we can do is be grateful and to minister and to bless him for all that he's done. That's what our giving and our offerings times have turned into at our church and in our ministry and with you, my friends and partners. It's just a time to minister to God. It's just a time to bless him. It's a time to acknowledge him through a cheerful heart of his amazing, amazing love. Look at this uh, scripture, Luke chapter 17, verses, um, let's look at verses 12 through 19. Luke 17, verses 12 through 19. Uh, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were leopards, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices, and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed as they went before they got to the priest. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, not just cleansed, but he was healed, he turned back, and with a loud voice, he did what? He glorified God. He glorified God. He, 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 he praised, gave him thanks. He glorified God. He fell down on his face, get this picture, at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Now, that's a whole other story. You're talking about the racism we're dealing with today. Boy, the Samaritans and the Jews, uh-uh. Notice when your heart is changed, then even though racism exists, you can be grateful and thankful. And only God can change a person's heart. So, preacher, you still have a part in this, preaching this gospel, demonstrating the love of God, praying so that the God that we know can enter in and change somebody's heart. God knows how to change people's hearts. And sometimes when we pray, we give heaven consent to come in and change people's hearts. You know, Jesus encountered racism. You know, when that, that verse of Scripture, foxes have holes, birds are there have a nest, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. That's causing Samaritan. They said, nope, there's no way you stand here. Get on out of here. Go to the next place. You're going out there with those Jews and look at who you are. No, 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 no. He said, that's why we went to the next town. You're going to always run into people who have crazy hearts. You're going to run into a bunch of people who are racist and people who prejudge you. You're going to always run into that. In this world, you will have tribulation. Okay, that's, that's something that's not going to go away. But you can trust God to come in and change people's hearts. You can trust God that some of the meanest people, some of the most racist people, some of the most people that prejudge you, you, and God can change their heart. God can change their heart. God can change their heart. I'll go further. God's changing their heart right now. We can use our faith. God's changing their heart. God's taking that heart of hate out and replacing it with a heart of love. God can do that. God can do that. So this leper experienced the love of God, the cleansing of God. Wow. The healing of God. And he was grateful. And he came back and showed gratitude and gave thanksgiving and glorified Jesus. 
It is important that we establish a lifestyle of praise and confessions. The devil wants us to focus on our problems. However, when we give God the praise, we defeat the enemy's tactics and win. Amplify your faith with the power of praise and confessions. If you want to take your life to the next level, don't miss your chance to get your hands on the power of praise and confessions. Creflo Dollar's new three-message series for just $20. I believe if you'll start praising God today, It'll cause you to focus more on God's Word. It'll cause you to focus more on what God has to say about some things rather than you focusing on your problems. So you've got to decide what you're going to focus on. Praise is going to help direct your focus on God's promises. Add the Daily Faith Confession CD and walk out this life of praise. You can get the whole combo today for only $25. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. Don't miss a service and catch up on the latest messages from Creflo and Taffy Dollar like No More Worries, Overcoming Uncertainty, and countless other life-changing series streaming on the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Holy Spirit's not sitting, sitting around reminding you of what you did in the past. That's condemnation. He's not going to do that. If any man is in Christ, he is a new species of being. You know why? Because of the image of Christ. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store, search Creflo Dollar Ministries, and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. Everything in God's kingdom works by faith. Now, I remember when Taffy and I started giving, it was a painful thing to give because we didn't have much at all financially. However, we made a decision to be givers. And one of the most quoted scriptures in the Bible is John 3:16. God so loved the world that he gave. Therefore, as Christians, we give. Our giving is an expression of our love. And when you support Creflo Dollar Ministries financially, you are giving to our efforts to spread the gospel all over the world. And in addition to helping millions who are hurting and have vital physical needs, pray about what God would have you to sow at this time. And we want to thank you in advance for your support. To support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the word of God from pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. For more information, visit us at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support 